Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a video going over Power Platform environments. Um, it's gonna be pretty high level today, going over you know what is an environment, different types of environments, um, which environments you should use for what, um, certain things like that. So more geared towards a beginner with Power Platform that might need some help with the conceptual side of environments. Without further ado, let's hop into the video. So our first slide is going over what are Power Platform environments. So at their highest level, you can think of environments as storage spaces. They're just containers to store your Power Apps, flows, chatbots, as well as dataverse tables. Each environment is also created under a single Azure Active Directory tenant, and any resources within that environment can only be accessed by users within that AD tenant. So while they're called Power Platform environments, uh, they don't handle Power BI currently. Power BI is handled separately in what's called workspaces. So for the sake of environments, just know that it's Power Apps, Power Automate flows, chatbots, and then dataverse tables all live kind of in the same structure. So moving on, we have about five different types of environments. Those would be the default environment, sandbox environment, production, trial, and developer environments. Now out of these, there's really only three that I think are most important to really understand, and that is the default, sandbox, and production. So now we'll go on and we'll cover each environment in order. So first up, we're gonna talk about the default environment. Um, and the default environment is something that every organization that leverages Power Apps will have. It is automatically created. You can't get rid of it and you can't get around it. So a little bit about how the default environment works with users is that everyone is assigned the environment maker security role. And we'll touch a little bit on security roles later in the video, but all you need to know now is that this gives everyone that has a Power Apps license access to come into the default environment, use connections, uh, build Power Apps, and build Power Automate flows. So with all the access that users have to this environment, uh, Microsoft likes to kind of call this the organization sandbox um, or personal productivity. So, you know, this is where a user might come in and build their own personal automations, you know, type of uh, workflows or apps. You know, if my boss emails me, do this. Um, maybe an app specific to part of my job. But the one thing you don't want to have in the default environment is kind of mission critical or business applications that developers are building and pushing out uh, to end users. Uh, you don't want that to live in the default environment. Those should live in their own production environments. Just keep that in mind as you're building applications. Uh, but again, depending on the organization that you work at, you might only have a default environment and you might not have enough capacity to provision a new environment. So. And again, with all the access that users have, this can pose some security concerns for an organization. Um, so in the near future, I'll be making a separate video on the default environment, kind of highlighting these as well as some remedies uh, to that. But for the sake of this video, a good high level overview of the default environment is it's the main environment that's provisioned with Power Apps. Um, everyone has access to come in and build their own personal applications in. So next environment we're gonna look at is the sandbox environment. Um, and this type of environment is pretty synonymous with the traditional development environment. Um, it's just used for non-production applications to live. Uh, so if your organization has developers building these Power Apps and flows, this is where the developers are gonna actually build and tweak and update and test the applications before they would move them to a separate production environment uh, where the end users are actually gonna go ahead and leverage those apps. And these types of environments are very flexible. You have full control over them and you can also copy and reset them uh, at will. So a good high level overview for the sandbox environment is this is just a separate environment for developers to build and test applications and flows uh, before they would push them out to end users in a separate environment. So next up we have the production environments. Um, and like I mentioned in the last slide, this is where you're gonna store your production applications, your solutions, your flows, uh, your dataverse tables. Um, this is where you want an app to be shared out to an end user. Um, a developer would not be coming in this environment and making updates. They would make updates in the development environment and then move the application to here. So high level overview for this one is this is just where an app is going to live in its final state to be shared out with an end user. So moving on, we have the trial environment. Um, and this is a little bit of a lesser known environment type. Um, and a reason why you'd want to use a trial environment is let's say you have a highly customized development environment, a bunch of settings set up, um, access restricted, but you want to provision a new environment to test some new features, test a new idea, whatever it may be, you can provision a trial environment, um, which you have full control over. And in short term, the standard trial environment lasts 30 days, which I believe you can extend. Um, but after that time is out, this environment will be gone. However, if you provision a trial environment with a subscription model instead of the standard 30 days, instead of having the environment deprovision automatically, you can actually convert it to a production environment. However, if you do this, it will no longer be free and you will use up some of your Dataverse capacity. So a good high level overview of the trial environment is it's an environment that you can spin up very quickly to test new features without leveraging your Dataverse capacity um, and that will automatically delete whenever you're done testing. So the last 
environment type is called developer. Um, and this is not to be confused with the sandbox or development environment. Um, this is an environment that's solely used for a single developer. It's kind of their personal area to uh, build power apps, power automate stuff, test. Um, it's provided through the community plan, so it's free. Um, it can't be shared with users. Um, it's for individual use. Um, apps, however, can be moved out if needed. Uh, and you do need a Microsoft email as well as an active tenant to use the developer um, environment. Um, I do have a video going over how to set this all up. If you are someone that wants to start playing around with Power Apps for free, I'll link that video now. So a good high level overview for this one is that it's a separate environment solely for an individual developer um, to kind of test in their own area. So let's say you have a development environment that has a bunch of different developers working out of it. It's very restricted. It's customized. Uh, you don't want to mess anything up by putting your own kind of personal test applications, whatever you might do um, on the side. In this shared development environment, you can go ahead and provision your own personal environment um, that you have control over. So now that we've gone over what environments are and the different types of environments you can provision, uh, we can go over a little bit of how to access environments. Um, the kind of basics of it is that environment access is dictated by what's called security roles. Any environment has kind of out-of-box security roles that you can assign to users to give them varying degrees of access, but these are subject to change at any time from Microsoft. I've picked out three security roles to kind of highlight the kind of main types of access that you'll have to an environment. The first one being basic user. This role is pretty much what it sounds like. It just gives someone access to an environment but this will not give them access to go in and create and provision applications. Um, so when they log into make.powerapps.com, they actually won't see this environment as selectable for them, but they'll still have access to applications in this environment uh, that are shared out to them. The next one would be environment maker, um, and this would allow someone to go in and actually build applications. So this is what you might wanna share out with developers. And the last security role we're gonna take a look at is the system administrator role. And this is something you'd want to assign to someone who's the quote unquote owner of an environment. This gives them access to the admin portal. So if they need to go into the back end and make any changes to other users or add or remove stuff from an environment, it kind of gives them full access to it. Again, there's a lot more to security roles and they can get very in depth um, and you can create your own security roles, especially when you start working with Dataverse, that's a must. Um, but for the sake of this video, those are kind of the three main ones that you need to know about. So this kind of brings us to our last slide, and this is how should I use environments? So it's completely dependent upon your need and your organization size, as well as your licensing and capacity. So environments are provisioned based off your organization's database or dataverse capacity. And you might be in an organization that has very limited database capacity, so you might not be able to provision environments at all. So you might be stuck just working in the default environment, but for the most part, you should at least have a development environment, a QA or test environment, and then a production environment. So this brings us to the end of our video. Um, again, this was a very high level overview of what Power Platform environments are, um, and then the different types of environments, a little bit about access, a little bit about security roles, um, I'll have some more videos about environments specifically in the future, um, so stay tuned for that. And I'll have some documentation from Microsoft on environments if you want to go um, do a little bit more reading on them. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below um, and let me know what you want to see next. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.